Okay, so, so very sadly, in April this year, we lost another good person, another good name, f to what people, I mean, everyone's saying that it was suicide, which is fair enough, but we're kind of assuming it's to the suffering of mental health, because those of you who know who I'm talking about, this person avidly turned around and said they had mental health issues, they had a mental disability, as it were, and they suffered quite badly with the down moments of that disability. And that disability is bipolar. Bipolar disorder. It's an evil, evil little disorder, which I believe heightens the problem with depression. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the show, welcome back to the diary. So yes, bipolar, depression, autism, depression. Mental health is really kind of on the high at the moment with this lockdown. This lockdown's got everyone stuck indoors. And then you hear on the news that Cumberbatch or whoever, all of the top names, the ones that are going, oh, stay indoors, stay indoors. If you have symptoms, stay indoors. Don't go outside, don't visit family, don't travel anywhere. Blah, 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 blah but yet they're going around doing it themselves. Don't breathe on people. <sighs> you. <sighs> but considering the fact that a lot of us are locked inside and we're not going around seeing family and friends, those who have autism, those who have bipolar, those who have depression as it is anyway, quite likely, I'm gonna say, not definitely, I'm gonna say quite likely, are feeling the effects of their depression and their other disabilities and other mental health issues quite a lot more at the moment because even though they didn't necessarily want to go outside to begin with, some of them are wanting to now and not being able to go out unless they're going out walking or going out for some exercise or going to the shop they kind of, they feel more trapped than they did before. And with depression, in my eyes, depression traps you in your own mind. Red Dwarf kind of said it quite well. Um, there was an episode where you've got paranoia and confidence. Everyone's got paranoia and confidence within themselves. But it's that paranoia that makes depression worse. That paranoia, if you listen to your paranoia all the time and you get stuck in that deep dark pit of listening to your paranoia, that kind of, it, it, so, it's sort of like being buried alive in your own mind. Paranoia is just dropping more and more dirt on top of your, on top of you and you just can't seem to get out at all. But the thing is, there is always a way of getting out. I like to kind of change this statement up a little bit to what someone enjoys. So say you enjoy watching FOX, which is uh, freestyle extreme mo motorbike racing. Not racing, but motorbike um, kind of tricks and stuff. If you think of life as a dirt track, there is always jumps, there is always that one big jump that's going to be really scary and really hard to do. But the minute you conquer that jump, you're going to feel amazing. But if you are that scared, that worried about that jump that you just cannot do it, there'll always be another jump to take. Just because something feels like a mountain to you, doesn't mean to say you can't transform that mountain into an anthill if you kind of catch my drift. is <laughs> what I mean by I kind of like to change that statement up a little bit. You can see how and why I change it up and where I change it up. If you can't, I can give you another one, which is um, if you're into building things, whether it's with Lego, connects, or real life stuff. If 
you want to build something big and you're not sure how to do it or it it's getting a bit awkward it's getting to the point where it's a struggle to finish that build just remember that you're gonna feel better for yourself when you do finish it or if there's a problem that occurs with it that you just can't see how to finish it then you can always build something else for a while and that should get your brain working into fixing the problem with the other build and you sort of lost it for a little bit there because it was on the fly it's kind of ugh. but you can kind of, if you know what I'm trying to say you you know what I mean and you can see what I'm trying to say but basically keep talking to people with if you've got depression keep talking to people guys talking about your feelings does not make you any less manly I promise you you are not gonna turn into a girl you are not gonna turn into a gay guy if you talk about your feelings I swear down please please just talk to someone whether it be your girlfriend your boyfriend your mother your father your sisters your brothers even your aunts, uncles, grandparents, if you still have them alive. Speaking of that, actually, during this coronavirus, as much as you can, even if you can't physically or don't want to physically go out and see them, reach out to your grandparents. Reach out and speak to them because you will... I know this is morbid. I know it is. You will not have long left with them. You will not have long left to speak to your grandparents with this. Even if they don't catch coronavirus and they survive this, you've still not got long left, so reach out, spend time with them. I mean, during this coronavirus lockdown, you kind of can't go out physically and spend time with them, that's fine, that's fine. But if you know how to make sure that they can do phone calls or video calls, like, say, make a little video for them, send it to them if they know how to do if they know how technology works enough or they can stomach watching a video for a few minutes of you saying hello i miss you so much i love you blah 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 it's gonna brighten their day and it should if you've got if you've got problems with mental health issues it should brighten yours as well just if all you're even if all you're doing is saying hello grandma i love you I miss you so much, this, that, and the other, whatever you want to say. Trust me, unless you're cold hearted, that should fill you with the warmth and love you need to make you feel better, even if it is just for five minutes, even if it is just for five minutes. Just don't listen to that paranoia all the time. I know it's difficult, I know it's hard, I know it's easy for me to say, but trust me for someone who does struggle with depression every so often or at least down moments i mean i like to say that i'm mentally allergic to a soft mk soft mk is the um artificial sugar flavor preservative can't remember which it is eh, that they put into a lot of sugary drinks and as a lot of you know who watch this channel quite a bit you will know that i have a major major dr pepper addiction <sighs> and a soft mk is within that drink and the reason why i like to say that i'm mentally allergic to it is because it puts my depression deeper it sets it off the more i drink it the more i feel depressed yes it could just be the sugars yes it could just be the caffeine i have no idea i don't really want to quit it to be honest i mean i want to quit it but i also don't because it is one of my favorite drinks i know it's I know it's messing with my teeth, but I just can't stop drinking it. I really can't stop drinking it. And because of my teeth, my depression, my autism and everything else, I should really kick it in, but there's nothing. There is nothing that I can drink on a daily basis throughout the day like I do Dr. Pepper. I've tried water. For some obscure reason, I seem to be able to taste all of the nasty little chemicals in water, the stuff that they use to purify to make it drinkable. Yeah. <laughs> Cur um, I've even tried uh, water water that's been 
treated, so it's had all of the stuff filtered out of it. Not bad, but I prefer cold water, like proper come out the fridge cold water. And ow, mm, my teeth. I've tried juices. Problem with that? A soft MK is still in the juices. I've tried proper natural. No added sugar juices. <laughs> yes, it's a sugar addict. It's a sugar addiction, obviously. Because if it wasn't a sugar addiction, if, if it was just the caffeine, coffee would do me fine. Tea would do me fine. The natural juices would do me fine. And I wouldn't have a problem with the way it tastes. <laughs> Basically, I just don't like the way natural juices taste. I don't mind orange juice, however, I've got a bit of a thing. The Super Carlin Brothers had a video about this sort of thing. Jay in particular said it himself. Cherry Coke, he said. He said Cherry Coke, he only ever gets it at the cinema. I have that sort of same thing with orange juice. Pure, non-concentrate orange juice. I don't like to have orange juice if I don't have the sniffles, if I don't have a cold, or I don't have anything like that. If I'm not feeling unwell, I don't like to have orange juice because I know at the time, if I'm craving orange juice, then I'm not well and my body needs that. Vitamin C, there we go. That vitamin C back in, its, back in the system. So, I don't like to drink orange juice out of time when I'm ill. I prefer to only leave it when I'm ill because it's that placebo kind of in my mind thing of, oh, this orange juice is making me feel better. It's it's stopping me being ill all the time. I feel better because I've had my orange juice. Yeah. <laughs> maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but that's kind of beside the point. As I was saying with paranoia, depression, bipolar and autism and everything else, I really do think that conditions like bipolar and autism make paranoia and depression a lot, lot worse. The reason why I do think that is because with autism, autism where we don't necessarily understand what body language means, Sometimes if we've had enough training or enough experience with it, we can learn. It's why some people who, if you know someone autistic, you'll immediate, they'll immediately know what you mean by your body languages because they've got to know you. They've got to know you and your tics, your particular stuff, the particular stuff you do when in certain moods. But that's the thing, coming across someone new, we don't necessarily know what their body language means and we can't always decipher it properly. So if we're there thinking that someone's being nasty when they're actually just joking around and they're doing banter, it makes us feel bad and it makes us slightly depressed and pushed aside and everything else, excluded and everything. It's, I would say it's a sort, of, sort of the same with bipolar, but it's actually technically not. Bipolar is kind of... It's a weird one. If you see someone, one minute happy, next minute drudging around in the pajamas because they can't be asked to do, can't be asked to get dressed or can't be asked to do anything else. It's actually technically not that they can't be asked. It's that they're really that low in their mood or their swings that they can't find the motivation, they can't find the reason to. And it's that there that I think makes the depression worse because they're already on the low of their bipolar that they don't have or they can't find the reason to do anything and then paranoia and depression just kind of throws itself on top and it makes it even worse it makes it to the point where instead of just walking around in pajamas because they can't find the reason to get dressed they're, st they're just not getting out of bed at all I mean don't go having a go at me too much. If that's not how it is for you and you have bipolar, that's fine. I don't mean to upset you or anything like that. I'm just seeing. I'm just saying from what I've seen, 
same from uh, experiences of reading stories about people with bipolar. If it's not like that, I'm sorry, I didn't mean any offence by it. That's just what I've seen. So if you want to share how it is for you, feel free in the comments below. I will make sure YouTube does not block my comments. I'm getting really irritated by that now, by the way. YouTube. Urgh. But, like I said, if you want to share, let me know in the comments below. If you don't, that's fine. Don't, don't feel like you have to share in the comments because I get how nasty the internet can be. That's the other thing. For the person that we've been talking about today, in particular, or the person that I've spoken about today, being in the media eye in the sense that they were, and being online in the sense that they were, I know that they personally, I mean, I'm sure, I don't mean I know, I mean I'm sure a lot of the hateful comments that they would have got didn't necessarily get to them as much as people would think that they did because quick tip if you do want to do youtube if you do want to do streaming and everything thick skin is going to be your best friend you can't go getting hurt at troll comments you can't go getting upset at hurtful comments because like i said troll comments that's all they are it's just dirty little trolls who've got nothing better to do Half of them are just jealous, the other half, like I said, have just got nothing better to do. But just bear in mind that that could be someone's outlet for their own depression, that could be someone's outlet for their own mental health. So don't bite back at them having a go at them, just ignore it, get rid of it. YouTube has a setting for hold potentially inappropriate comments for a review use it because those kind of troll comments will not go public unless you say yes okay go public <laughs> but no this video is getting a bit too long and i'm kind of all over the place and i kind of don't really want to be doing that one with this kind of subject because it's a serious subject and everything else but i will be putting links to a few of my favorite kind of help services that should still be open if not they do have they all will have phone lines call lines that you can call into to help out with mental health if you are suffering from mental health i will put a couple of teenager related ones in there as well because why not um so yeah if you are suffering from any kind of mental health if you do have bipolar if you do have autism and you just need someone to talk to use one of the links one of the calls numbers below and just talk to someone don't hesitate please please do not hesitate please do not turn around and say oh I'll do it tomorrow because you never know when that when paranoia will throw on that last little bit of dirt of depression that will suffocate your mind to the point where you just don't want to carry on anymore please don't get to that point just talk to someone get someone to dig you out of that that deep dark pit get yourself some help so that's it for me today guys hopefully that helped and i know that a lot of you guys have been enjoying the song i remixed it was slightly rushed even though i said i wanted to do it a bit more justice i can if you want me to go through it again a bit more slowly and re-upload it or well not re-upload it but upload the longer version the proper version the one that i really wanted to show if not i'll leave it as it is but like i said that's it for me today guys let me know let me know everything below if you want to share do share if not don't worry about it don't necessarily you don't have to share to me just share your pain with someone that you trust make sure it's someone you trust right so that's it for me today guys, I'll see you tomorrow. See ya!